Well, hello, hello, my dear little maggoty maggots, or children of the darkness, fellow coven members, really whatever you prefer. And if you're new here, don't be alarmed. I have lots of little pet names for my followers because they're more like my beloved cult members, really. I think that I have the best ongoing bit of any YouTuber in all of existence in the entire world. I like to call myself the Antichrist and my followers, my little demons. So if you would like to become one of Satan's little helpers, all you have to do is click subscribe and click the like button and the notification bell, that way you never miss our next meeting. In today's meeting, we are doing something very exciting. We're opening a horror pack box. I love getting mail, you know what I mean? And then we're also going through all the rest of the physical media that I collected, which you can already probably see the titles of some of it. So maybe I'll go through that first. I'll go through what you can see and then I'll get into the horror pack. I don't know if you can see the titles from there. Maybe you can't, but this is a giant pack of the first seven seasons of Game of Thrones. I never would have picked this up voluntarily. Like, I never would have tried to seek this out. It just happened to be in this huge bundle at my local Goodwill and the whole pack was only $25. And because I had donated stuff recently and I had a coupon, it was only $17. So I really couldn't pass up on that, especially when some of these sets were probably at least $25 each. And I have so many thoughts and theories as to why somebody would get rid of this entire bundle. The most reasonable one is that these are DVDs and someone probably just upgraded their collection to Blu-ray. But my other theory is that because it is only the first seven seasons, we don't have all eight here. I wonder if this person just hated season eight so much that they vowed to never rewatch the show again. In which case, I think that's hilarious. So I'm gonna go with that as my theory, but feel free to leave any of your own theories down below. Because this was such a good deal, I didn't even really check on the quality of the DVDs and because they were all in a bundle, I assumed that the workers probably checked them. And also because I'm there all the time, I was probably the first person to come upon this. I don't think that anyone would have had time to steal them yet, but nonetheless, let's just break these open and see what's in them. So the seventh season comes in this like clear plastic casing. Oh, and this is separate, this little thing with all the bonus features on it. Winter is here. Oh, and stuff's falling out. Oh my god. This is just the same th thing as this. This is, they also have the bonus features on them. They're identical. Why? This looks like it must be a poster. No, it's just a guide of the whole seventh season. So you get this whole little booklet in here with all the bonus features. Kind of unnecessary amounts of pieces of paper, but whatever. And then, it, whoa, what just fell out? What was that? You open it and you got like the characters' faces on there. And yes, all of the discs are present. Yay. Oh, you know, another sad theory would just be that someone was like, well, I have HBO Max. I have all these on streaming all the time. I don't need physical media anymore. That's the worst of the theories. Okay, season seven is here and accounted for. Oh, I also realized that I didn't explain why this is not something I would have sought out for myself because I've actually just never watched this show. Well, sort of. There was one point where I did own the first season on DVD and I think that I got rid of that. Yeah, I'm looking over at my little TV shelf that I have and it's not there anymore. I'm pretty sure that I donated it because I tried to watch the very first episode and immediately there was like a bit of an incest vibe and I was like, what? Is, what is this. I just didn't think that like tonally it was for me, but I couldn't pass up on this. Oh, the sixth season is really nice. Looks really pretty. It's got this kind of, oh, you can't see. It's got this cool kind of like shift to it, sort of. It's just all the characters' faces. Come on, get out. Come on. What the hell? I can't get it out. Uh, uh. Ooh, pretty ladies, pretty ladies. Okay, moment of truth. Ooh, more pretty ladies. Oh, stuff's rolling out. Okay. Oop. Ah, but it looks like all of the discs are indeed accounted for, but they're kind of like unsticking here. That's okay. That's all right. I also should maybe check that they're not like really scraped up. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, no, they look perfect. Okay. On to season five, which also has a really cool cover. Ooh, it also slips out. <gasps> yes. What's her name? Emily Clark. Is that her name? I'll feel bad if that's not. But yes, they again have put the hot people on the covers. Oh, and again, the DVDs are falling out. Hold on. Yeah, I don't know if it's just like not good glue, if these are just super old, but they can't be that old, can they? Maybe this is why they got rid of these, because what? Why are they falling out? Oh, they're all falling out. What happened? Okay, I'm not gonna completely open this because this is just a really precarious situation here. Ooh, what kind of jank-ass glue were they using? It almost seems like they're supposed to fall 
loud. And then like, what, you're supposed to like use this as a, as a poster or something? All the DVDs are there though, yay. Get all the same bonus features on this one too. This is why they go inside of a box inside of another sleeve. On to season four. I swear to God, if the same thing happens again. Ooh, this one has like a cool bird on it. She's always front and center. She was just like the money maker of the show, huh? Ah, uh, okay, these are not falling out, but I can tell they're made with the same stuff and that makes me nervous. But yes, everything is here and accounted for. Love to see it. Same weird thing with this separate sheet for like the guide and the bonus features. Back in the box, back in the sleeve. Part of the ship, part of the crew. On to the third season. Sorry, I'm trying to do this quickly. And yes, we stay winning. We stay winning. Good, good. Oh, this sleeve is like ugly. I don't even, it's just like a shadow of a dragon on it. I think, can you even see that? I don't know. Can you see? There it is, you can see it there, yeah. Second season. I'm having the same problem with all of these. Oh, oh, okay, this sleeve is kind of a little bit falling apart, that's okay. I hope that that means that these people did watch these DVDs, you know? Oh, this time, Peter Dinklage made the cover. And, oh, oh gosh, oh gosh, these wanna fall out. They wanna fall out so bad. Oh my God, they're gonna do it. But yes, indeed, they're all here. How did they not learn? Like, this is the second season and that's happening and it was still happening, what, like up till the fifth season? They made some janky ass physical media. And finally the last season, I'm sorry. I feel like these discs are just gonna tumble out immediately. Whoop, whoop, ah, whoo. They wanna do it, they wanna fall out, they wanna fall out. Oh, I don't really know how well you can see that, but some of these are just like, they're just like popping off. They're just like wiggling off of the little thing. Like with what glue? Anyways, yes, every single disc of all seven seasons are all accounted for. How's that for preservation of media, huh? I gotta get the eighth season now, even though I know it's terrible. I know Game of Thrones fans are probably gonna like be lighting up my comment section like, don't do it. Anyways, this other title that you can probably see is a collection of Pixar shorts short films. I ended up getting this at a Goodwill for only three bucks. And it's this nice little sleeved edition and there are some bonus features on the back there if my camera would focus. Hello? This has some of my favorite shorts on it. I can't remember the names, but I think the one with the lamp and the little lamp, you know, the, the iconic like short there. I think that one is called Luxo Jr. And then there's this one with this alien and he's basically like this new alien on the job operating this spaceship and his job is to like abduct this human, but he does such a bad job and it's so funny. This, again, if you've been around, you know that when I find unique little odd things like this, I like to swoop them up. I think it was in my last physical media haul that I was talking about picking up a big collection of Looney Tunes cartoons. <laughs> Not necessarily because I'm crazy about Looney Tunes, but just in terms of like physical media preservation. You never know when Disney might screw Pixar over and take some of these off of their streaming site. So that does it for all the obvious titles that you could see there. So now I'm gonna get into the horror pack box. With how much shit that I talk about Horror Pack, I can't believe they're still sending these to me. I don't pay for them. And I think I've said that before, but nonetheless, it usually gives me some juicy titles for my next auntie haul. <laughs> Time to see what's in the bag. And first up, we have Reborn. Ooh, starring Barbara Crampton. In a seedy Los Angeles hospital, a stillborn girl is brought back to life by an electrical storm and abducted by a morgue attendant. Ooh, I think that's enough. I don't want to read anymore because that actually sounds pretty cool. Oh my God, my camera does not want to focus on these today. Hello? No, here, no. Can you see that? I hope so. My camera's being funky. <sighs> okay, anyways, hopefully this one's not a total L. Next up from Horror Pack, we have got The Cursed. Oh, yo. This is a movie that I am happy to own and I wouldn't have thought of it. Like I wouldn't have thought to get this for myself. This is a pretty great, very original, unique werewolf movie that came out last year. Definitely not your typical werewolf movie. And I think I remember I loved the first two acts of it. I was thinking it was a perfect film because also like <laughs> my friend drove me to the theater and so I took an edible and I was just like locked in. It was like one of those experiences. But then I think I remember the third act got really, really weird. And did I, did I only give this movie like three stars? Whatever happened in the ending really, really turned me off, but the rest of the movie is really good. The effects are great. The performances are great. I, I definitely recommend. Good one horror pack and it's sleeved. It's also just good timing because I am in a werewolf era on my horror channel. Oh, I didn't say that at the top of the video, but yeah, this is my second channel. And then I also have a Patreon. So content three times a week if you want to sign up for that too. All right, up next we have Bad Dream. 
dreams. The Best of Nightmares Film Festival in 2023. This is actually cool. It's a collection of nine different short films and it's the best of this whole festival. Oh my God. Every time that I want to hold up a movie, it focuses like over here on the wall. Like, oh, okay, whatever. This just has nine different shorts on it. So that's cool. And hopefully they're like actually indie shorts and not like what I experienced at the LA 48 hour film festival. That was annoying because you could clearly tell at some of the shorts they had spent like $20,000 on and we were just out there like, whoa, <laughs> just happy to be nominated for some of these best of awards. So anyways, I'll get back to you on that. And last up from Horror Pack, what do we have in the magic bag? We have Mad Heidi. What the hell is it? Casper Van Dean. Okay, so that's Casper Van Dean right there. I actually met him when I worked on a movie set when I was like 19. So I have no idea what this is. I know that he works just doing like a lot of B movies now, but I don't know if this is gonna be for me. <laughs> in a dystopian Switzerland that has fallen under the fascist rule of an evil cheese tyrant, played by Casper Van Dien. Wow. Heidi lives a pure and simple life in the Swiss Alps. Her desire for freedom soon lands her in trouble with the dictator's henchmen. This sounds so weird. Is this even horror? I don't know. Horror Pack is always on some weird, weird shit. Like, who asks for this? <laughs> I guess the whole point is that it's stuff that we don't ask for so that we see more like indie stuff. I guess that's the whole point, but it's almost never good. Do you know what I mean? Yet another weird month for Horror Pack, but I am really happy about The Cursed. Okay, up next, only thrifted a couple of titles recently, the first of which being something called The Unborn, and I'm not even gonna try to like hold these things up anymore. It's just, I'm getting too frustrated. But this stars Gary Oldman, one of the UK's finest, and I've never heard of it. This also comes with the unrated version, so we get the theatrical and unrated here. I'll probably watch the theatrical version because what do you mean this released in theaters in the early 2000s and I've never heard of it? 2009? What? This one is probably gonna be in my next anti haul. I just have a feeling deep in my bones, but we'll see. Up next, I'm so excited about this one. I found Young Frankenstein. Oh my God, is it actually focusing? I can't really see because I'm not, I don't have my glasses on, but this also comes with quite a few special features there. Hopefully you can see it. Nope, see it's, it wants to focus over here again. There's a handful of special features. Either you can see them or you can't. I'll find out when I edit. This is one of the most popular Frankenstein adaptations that I'm aware of. I've only just like scraped the surface starting to do some of my Frankenstein research, which is why this is just so serendipitous. I say that all the time in my physical media halls because that's just what it is. The stars align for me and I always find things that are just so relevant. I am embarking upon a massive Frankenstein deep dive that's gonna be releasing in March for Women's History Month. Recently read Frankenstein for the very first time, became obsessed. I wanna watch the most popular Frankenstein movies from each decade for my research. And I just happened to find this one with a bunch of special features. So I'm the luckiest girl in school. Then I have a handful of books to share with you. I got some cool stuff at an estate sale. I also got this funky bottle, but I'll show you that afterwards. First up, I found a horror book and it's called Final Girls by Riley Sager. And it sounds remarkably similar to the Final Girls Support Group by Grady Hendrix, but this kind of seems better. <laughs> Although this is a pseudonym for an author is previously published under another name. So what's the real name? I don't know. When I do my annual recap of all the horror books that I read in 2024, I will indeed compare it to the Final Girls Support Group and I will let you know. But you gotta stick around all year. <laughs> Up next, I know that I just found the first book of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and I got that from Goodwill, but I got that for like only 80 cents and I got this at an estate sale for a dollar. So I don't feel bad about the fact that I also just purchased the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. I just finished watching the franchise for the very first time. And next week, the patrons will be treated to a very fun rant about the final movie. <laughs> and in said rant, I did talk about the fact that I need to read the books because it would probably just give me a much deeper appreciation. Maybe I would actually care about the movies then. So yeah, that's why I got this. I might take this to Europe with me and then leave it there once I'm done with it. I don't know. But I need a big book for my big travels and preferably something that I can leave at the destination because I like to get trinkets when I travel and there will need to be space for other things in my suitcase on the way back. But anyways, the last book that I got at the estate sale is called The Witch of Painted Sorrows. And I'm pretty sure that this is smut. I honestly have no idea. I don't know. It's at the very least supposed to be kind of erotic, so. New York socialite Sandrine Salome flees her abusive husband for a grandmother's Paris mansion, but what she finds there is even more menacing. The house, famous for its lavish art collection and elegant salons, is closed and under renovation. Her grandmother insists it's too dangerous to visit, but Sandrine defies her. An unexplainable force is drawing her home. And then yada yada, she like meets a man and she meets another man and yeah, I don't know. There's also witches, 
Um, this is Sandrine's Wild Night of the Soul, her odyssey in the magnificent city of Paris. So yeah, uh, this definitely caught my eye and it was only a dollar, so I had to buy it. I know that in my most recent physical media haul, I brought home so many books. Don't worry, in my next anti haul, there's gonna be a lot of books in that. So I I'm working on getting rid of stuff as I take it in, but I had to. It just was so cheap and um, I, I needed it. So there's all the physical media for this haul, but I have a few more things to show you. At that estate sale, like I told you, I also found this really cool bottle. It was made in Denmark. I don't know if it's an antique, but it kind of feels like it could be. I just really like weird bottles. Um, I had to have it, especially green bottles, especially green bottles. You'll see that in another second. I liked that it was very curvy. I feel like you could either put wine or olive oil in this and it just would be so pretty in the kitchen. I'm not a uniform person. I like getting lots of little eclectic little pieces for my home, but this will have to go away in storage because I don't have my own home. This, this room is all I have. Recently, we also visited my boyfriend's grandma in the city and we went to this little antique store and I found this green bottle as well. It's all covered in like nasty sticky shit because I think that it just was like taped for too long. This is not gonna focus. That's not gonna happen, I don't think, but I'm trying. Whatever, forget it. You can probably see it well enough. Yes, I am obsessed with this. I really need to get it cleaned up and then I can probably turn it into a spell jar. The stopper is like perfect. Wait, Oh, but yeah, definitely needs a wash. And I'm not sure how to do that because I don't know how old this is. Anyway, when I find a weird bottle in an antique store or at an estate sale, I gotta have it. Just because I envision one day having a home where I have lots of shelves everywhere and I have like a big library and stuff and I just keep all of my like witchly trinkets there. I just saw this one on my desk. I got this when I went to visit Celise in New York. We went to Pennsylvania for a weekend and there were a lot of really weird antique shops there. And I got this lovely little glass bottle there too. I love the shape of it. I think I've probably showed that to you before, whatever. Okay, last thing in this haul, just because I knew that you would care about it even though it's not physical media. I found this It Chapter 2 shirt for I think like four bucks at Goodwill and it's just like, oh, it's a, such a nice material. I wouldn't have gotten it otherwise, but this is like perfect like PJ, like rainy day, just like cozy t-shirt. So yeah, I had to get it. And it's my size. It's a big old t-shirt for a big girl like me. And I can wear it for YouTube videos and stuff. So it was a business project purchase, okay. That will do it though. That is the entire haul for your for your Friday morning. Keep your eyes peeled for the anti-haul next week because I have decided that I am gonna start posting my anti-haul stuff to Poshmark. I wasn't gonna do that originally. I just was gonna like give stuff away because I didn't think it was like worth the effort. But you guys made a real big stink uh, on my last anti-haul about me giving that stuff away because you would kill to have it. So I will be posting it to Poshmark for just like ridiculously marked down rates because you guys are right you know it's kind of a toss-up whether or not someone in my area is going to cherish it as much as you guys will so keep an eye out for that and I also might have already posted some of the last anti haul stuff on my Poshmark too hopefully I've linked my Poshmark down below but I think it's still like Kai John's 13 because I was gonna get rid of like an entire Friday the 13th collection it was just like a real mishmash of old DVDs but I also had like an arrow video edition of Robocop and some other cool stuff too. So keep an eye out for that, but I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope I got you in the next one. Bye!